Hello! Oh, that is a nice, nice, is it blouse? Or it's dress? a dress, actually. Well, it's nice. I had a wedding this evening. You went to a wedding, and now you're here. Yes, I had I had a wedding, and then we went to the bar, and then I left the bar to come here to be with you fine people. Aw, you left alcohol for us. I had two coffees and then two cocktails. So anything could happen. Yay! <laughs> I'm, I'm caffeinated and boozed. Yay! It's a weird night. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you hear that? What? She growl or? She grunts at you. She grunts. You touch her when she's in the middle of something. Hey, hey. She, she just grunts at you. <clears throat> I was licking my butt. What do you want? <laughs> I, I love how. Who gets married on a Monday? Friends of mine did because they didn't have a ton of money for a wedding. So they decided to kind of do it on the cheap. So they did it on a Monday. I love how you, you put the cat and mouse up there to bribe her to stay. Watch this. This I've told you, this is a cat that gives no fucks. <laughs> and she's just like... She's going to fall asleep with it there. <laughs> I'm done with everything. She doesn't give a fuck. I'm done with everything. Whatever. It's like an Eeyore cat. She's a little bit like an Eeyore, yeah. Well, tonight we've got we've got a smorgasbord. Um, this this one goes all over the place. I I I think. Well, you know. I I think we'll discover the theme together. Should we find one? We'll discover it together. It's a journey of discovery, and horror. Mostly horror. Let's get Pietro going. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here. A segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? Um, this first story is just, it's horrific. It doesn't really get too into details, thankfully, but the guy's explanation, at least, I, I think the best thing we could say about this guy is, at least he's honest, you know? Honesty is a good trait. I just like pigs. Police arrest drunk naked man in Pennsylvania hog barn. Oh, you can like pigs. <laughs> you can't like <laughs> Millersville, Pennsylvania. A man faces a laundry list of charges after police found him drunk and naked in a hog barn he'd previously been banned from. How do you get banned from the hog barn? <laughs> well, I guess if you keep showing up naked. Hey, I'm here. No, no. Manor Township Police say Larry Henry Williams, 64. Not a life goal, kids. Not Old not enough to know better. Yeah, this is not was banned in March 2011 from ever returning the property, but officers found him there again two weeks ago. Officers got a call about a possible trespasser at a hog barn. When police entered the barn, they found Henry inside, naked, with several market weight hogs. So why did he ignore the ban? I just like pigs. Henry told officers when asked why he was there. Okay, this is the best. This this is the best. Um, this is like the Forrest Gump of drunken perverts. <laughs> I just love pigs. Henry also admitted to drinking a six pack of quote ham's beer made by Miller Brewing Company. That's He's, just insulting. That is awful. And racist. <laughs> <laughs> He goes naked to the hog bar to the hog barn with a six pack of hams. He had a theme in mind. Did he think the pigs would find it funny? Pigs, ham beer, pork sword. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's a recipe for a fun night. 
I, Bacon, beer, and dick could be a fun night. Uh, dick Crash in the channel says... You could do says, worse for a weekend. Dick Crash in the channel says, Ham's beer, get so drunk you'll fuck a pig. Not a don't, good ad. Don't, don't fuck a pig. Don't. Really don't. Don't fuck a pig. Don't fuck a pig and don't let a pig fuck you. Corkscrew penis, that's all I'm saying. Do you know what I keep thinking now? What? 31st South Park cartoon. Dude, you can't say pig fucker in front of Jesus. <laughs> Except when this guy dies, he'll have to. Well, <laughs> it doesn't say that he fucked the pigs. Maybe they're just being delicate here. It just, he just wanted to commune with the pigs. Naked. Maybe and drunk. He, maybe he's... A hogkin. Maybe he thinks he has the soul of a hog and belongs among them. Tell me you don't think that's actually a plausible explanation for all this. Exactly. How long have we been doing this? Computer Ronin, he cast pearls before swine. This little piggy went to market and this little piggy said no. <laughs> oh, God damn. <laughs> I, I'm going with he's hogkin. Swinekin? Porcinekin? You know, they, you know, they gotta find some elaborate damn name to try and make that shit sound dignified and well, shit. Well, that's what always amuses me is those people are, like, you, you never see, it's only the cool animals that people have the souls of. You never see a fucking platypus kin. No. You never see, like, a centipede kin. It's only the cool animals. Everybody's a wolf or there's, a fox. There's no chicken kin. There's none. Right. No chicken kin. Wonder why that is. Ah. <sighs> Next up, okay, I'm not a big fan of airline travel these days. I know you've not had great experiences, at least with the TSA. I'm not a big fan of not being on the ground in general. I already, when it comes to getting on a plane and sitting with strangers, I'm already, I don't know you. And, you know, I'm the kind of person, I'm sure you're perfectly nice, but I'm, I don't want to know yeah. you. Yeah, you're locked in a pressurized tube 30,000 feet in the air. It's unpleasant. Yeah. So I like I keep to myself. I put something on that I can read or watch on my phone and deliberately keep all my attention focused away from the person. And I try really hard to sleep so I don't think about the panic attacks I have during takeoff. There is a there is a company in France, however, that has patented a new way of putting seats in an airplane. And I guarantee you the first time this is implemented there will be a riot in the sky. Are you ready? This this is fucking. Look at this. Look at this sit. Look at this. Look at this shit. Okay, are you seeing this? This is a dis what? It's it's loading. Hank, here we go. Look at that. Look at how you'll have to sit. Oh hell no. Viewed from above, a human... Hell no! Viewed from above, a sitting human being looks like a Tetris, a T-block from Tetris. The shoulders jut to the sides, the legs protrude forward in a narrow line. It's not the most efficient shape in the Tetris game, a game in which the goal is to find space to fit all the Tetris blocks, but fortunately, humans aren't pieces in a video game. Or they weren't until now. Zodiac seats France sees this human tessellation as opportunity. The airline manufacturer patented the with the World Intellectual Property Organization the Economy Class Cabin Hexagon, a truly nightmarish idea that lives somewhere between Saw and the Twilight Zone. Basically, the idea is take the middle seat, already the worst seat on a flight, and turn it around 180 degrees to maximize space. Look at this shit. I love even... The, the, it's horrible. The article says rampant butt touching. <laughs> like it's and like it's not tough enough to get up out of those rows to use the bathroom or something. Oh yeah, seriously. There's no getting up. 
there's there's no freedom. There's no space. There's no nothing. You're just there's no not touching somebody. You're staring at them. Yes, that's the problem. Okay, if you're stuck for let's say a, a standard two hour flight, you're stuck in a two hour flight facing another person. You're gonna get forced eye contact. I don't know about you, but I know people who eye contact twigs them the fuck out, especially yeah. with complete strangers. Although, although, I read something in the New York Times how you can psychologically force yourself to fall in love with anybody. They have this method by which, like, you can choose, and the way you do it is you sit and you make persistent eye contact with this person while asking each other a predetermined series of increasingly personal questions. So Dan's looking at me like, no, no, that's, that's ridiculous. I'm a psychologist and that's total bullshit. But I read it in the New York Times. <laughs> Sorry, honey. It was in the New York Times. Maybe You're not. Like the new way of love. They'll just hand out that questionnaire and be like, Tara, you have this... Okay, uh, so either we're going to have rampant fucking on a plane. I mean, it is a French airline. <clears throat> See, my my take on this is there will be fist fights. If you sit me across from another person and force me to find anywhere I can look that isn't their face... Yeah. I'm going to freak out at some point. So this this is a murder Imagine plane. Imagine like international flight. <clears throat> yeah, how, how, many, how many hours was I from here to Manchester? I think it was... From New York to Ireland is six. Yeah, I think I was on an eight-hour flight, at least. And that's not even counting the, the layovers and shit, but we're talking eight-hour flight. Facing another human being, complete stranger, you don't know them, you don't want to know them. This is a murder plane. This looks like torture. It does. Or a really, really horrible experiment. Now you notice they make, this is the economy class cabin. They wouldn't do this shit in first class. No. Why? First class, they're doing this in economy class so that they have the room to give first classers California king size fucking beds. You seen that shit? I was on an international flight. And they, I, I walk in, and I'm going back to my scrunched little fucking seat, and I walk... It reclines into a bed. Fucking beds, and it's got, like, plugs and fucking TV screen. It's like... A little privacy thing. It's a whole other world. Fuck all of them. From Jerry Maguire, first class used to mean a better meal, now it's a better life. Yeah. So, in this case, they're going to have to add a security cage to first class because the people in the back will be tearing each other limb from limb. Yeah. Yeah, this is a bad idea, France. Don't do this. Unless you're trying to force people to fall in love. <laughs> which I feel like is a romantic comedy waiting to happen. Or one of those horrible Amazon ebooks. I I got pounded in the butt by an airplane, one of those. You, I don't, have never, you don't know about those? Oh, no. oh, it's awful on Amazon eBooks. Don't go there. It's a hell. It's a hellscape. It's awful. There's airplane porn. There's porn of everything. There's a there's a book called "I Was Pounded in the Ass" by my book. I was pounded in the ass. It's a sequel to. I was pounded in the ass by my own ass. By M.C. Escher? It's real. Anyway, tangent. Um, Have you ever been out in public and encountered somebody and you just look at them and you go, your mama did not raise you right? I work in customer service, so daily. I used to do theater when I was in high school. And I'm not talking like school theater. I'm talking like community theater out in like a real fucking theater, the Dock Street Theater in Charleston. It was, uh, you know, we got paid to be there and shit. It was, you know, 
And there are what rules. You, what, what was your biggest role? Um, I was in uh, Man of La Mancha. It was one of the extras and one of the guards in Man of La Mancha. Um, we did Alice in Wonderland. I was King of Hearts. Um, various and little sundry different things. A lot of backstage stuff I did. I, my favorite, my favorite job was the soundboard because I got to control all the sounds. That sounds, that sounds like you. Only it was in the pre-computer days, so we had to use reel-to-reel -reel tape decks. And we had to find CDs with the sound effects, record them onto the reel-to-reel -reel tape, and then t splice the tapes together. They gave us razor blades to play with. Because that's, that, that's how you splice tapes together. You cut the tape, and then you tape it together with a razor blade. They're giving this to me. I was happy. Um, but there's, a, there's an implicit social contract between audience and performers. Yes. Let's see if I can get her a grunt. <laughs> did you catch it? Yes, we did. That's the sound when you disturb her. I wonder if the people on stage made this sound. Um, this comes to us from Broadway, no less. Desperate man with dying phone jumps onto Broadway stage to revive it. What? The man was heckled as ushers unplugged his phone from a fake wall. A man attending a performance at the Broadway play, Hand to God, decided he needed a little more juice on his iPhone just before the play started. So, because any outlet is fair game when your battery icon is flashing red, red he climbed up onto the stage and plugged in his phone into a prop wall with a prop outlet and walked away. Of course, the outlet, like the wall, was fake. According to the New York Post, crew had to stop the pre-show music and make an announcement to the audi audience that this sort of thing isn't allowed. One audience member copped to, quote, loudly heckling the idiot when the ushers removed the phone and asked him to take it back. What would make you think that that's okay? And what world? Even if it was a real outlet. You, you, dumb motherfucker. And what the fuck do you need your phone charged for right then? Do it! You're a performance. You're supposed to have your phone turned off anyway! The, the the wedding I went to tonight, the officiant, before they started, he was like, before we start, I want everybody to take out your phone, not just put it on silent, but shut it off. He's like, we're going to spend the next 25 minutes experiencing a thing together and not looking at it through the screens, which I thought was awesome. Like, they had a photographer, people had cameras, but like, put down the fucking phone and live your life for a second. All right. Well, to, to be fair, to be I hate that people who, who say we're not we're going to share it together and not through a screen. Come on. No, I think it's gotten really bad. Like, Dan and I went to Virginia a few weeks ago, and you were watching people at this beautiful hotel we were at just doing this. Not actually looking at anything. Just looking at it through their device. Right. We, like, we are a little too, and I say that myself. Like, if, I, if my phone's in the next room, I'm itchy, <clears throat> you know? <laughs> You're itchy? But I was also raised with basic fucking manners and would not jump on the fucking stage on a Broadway show to charge it. Apparently we have a video of this. I'm going to play it for everybody now so they can see this imbecile live and in person. Everybody, let's point and laugh. Get off the screen. Blocking my screen. Here we go, let's have a look at this guy. Here he is, hopping up on the stage. <clears throat> there come the ushers, and he's like, what? What'd I do? How did- this... The fucking balls on you. I mean, goddamn, son. You're in a live, and, and the fact that he used the fake one. The fact that he just saw an outlet and thought, oh, okay, that my phone go there. Well, the fact that he saw a fucking outlet on a stage 
And one, not only thought that must be real, but two, thought that must be there for me to charge my phone. No! You don't belong there! No. Do you have an agent? Where Are you in the union? Are you by chance in any way, shape, or... Did you write the motherfucker? No? Sit the fuck down. The fuck Shut, sit the fuck down. Shut the fuck up. And turn your phone off. And why do you need your phone anyway? You're a show. Right. Your, what did, your mama is sad right now, sir. Your mother is sad. You have made, you have brought shame to your family. On Broadway. And that takes a lot of work. <laughs> anyway, um, the, we, we have often talked about the, our, our America's obsession with, oh my God, sex. No! Oh, give us more violence. There's a head exploding. Yay, there's a nipple. Oh, God. Save the chillins. For God's sake, don't breastfeed that baby in the theater where we're watching Arnold Schwarzenegger murder people. <laughs> there are kids here watching Arnold Schwarzenegger murder people. How dare you breastfeed that baby? Actually, you know what? In the, in the latest one, he didn't murder anybody. Not a person. Well, whatever. Who cares? It looks like piece of crap anyway. <laughs> Um, we have one of these, and I love, they have these, mis it, th this mysterious occurrence. You know how this shit happened, but they say it's, oh, we don't know how this happened. This comes to us from a Target store in San Luis Obispo. In where? San Luis Obispo. Have a look. Porn broadcasted over SLO PA system, police say. Shoppers at a Target store in St. Louis Obispo got more than they bargained for Friday morning. About 11.30 a.m., St. Louis Obispo police responded to the store, the 1100 block of Los Osos Valley Road, for a report of an audio track of pornography playing over the store's PA system. I have a related story. It was not immediately known how the perpetrators managed to overrun the PA system or how long the explicit material aired, but a store employee who wished to remain unnamed said the store was briefly evacuated while the staff figured out how to turn it off. That's a bit drastic. You evacuated the store because they might hear someone fucking. When I used to work in a mall in college, um, <laughs> They had an FYE, which for the kids is a store that used to exist and used to sell CDs and music and books and all kinds of stuff. Uh, you used to buy music on CDs on round. Yeah, phones. I think I yeah. remember those. Yeah. They also sold videos and outside the store at each of the three entrances were five monitors that would show they would put in a movie for the day or whatever or a music video, whatever, just like advertise whatever was new. And one night after, they also had a big screen inside the store. <laughs> oh God. One night after closing, one of the guys I knew that worked there thought it would be funny to play a prank on his coworkers and put on the butt naked Macarena on the big screen inside the store. The what? The butt naked Macarena. This was a video that existed. It was the nineties. It was a different time. <laughs> Okay. You didn't realize that whatever you put on the big screen inside the <laughs> screen, also went on all the monitors <laughs> at the entrances. And just because the mall's closed doesn't mean people leave. There are motherfuckers that hang out in the mall for an hour after the mall's closed, <laughs> just tormenting people, not letting them close stores. So there were still customers, and the butt naked Macarita was playing on all these monitors, and he lost his job. Now, <laughs> the butt naked macarena. The butt naked macarena. It's a thing. No, in this case, thing. in this case, they I don't say know who would get turned on by that. The, the macarena is the least sexy dance in the history of the world. Why would watch? Especially the two old dudes. I've never seen a macarena. Like, right, but like, why would watching naked <sighs> people do this? Yeah, I know. There's like. 
That's a really, really <sighs> specific fetish. In this case, I know exactly what happened. Even though they say, it was not immediately unknown how the perpetrators managed to overrun the PA system. Bullshit! Employee. The manager was in his office. He pushed the PA button. He forgot the shit was pushed. <laughs> and he started spanking it on his computer. The fuck? You know the fuck he did. That's exact. We don't know how this could have possibly. And I love how they evacuated the store. Why was that like? Couldn't you just turn down the volume? Or <laughs> get out! Get out! There's butt <laughs> stacks! And here's the thing, like, people don't, like, I've worked in a mall while the fire alarm was going off. People just keep shopping. I've had to evacuate a mall store where I was working, and people were mad at us. They were like, but I'm not done shopping. And we're like, do you hear the fire alarm? Do you hear the fire alarm? Like, <laughs> I was in a Target one day, and what? all the lights huh? went out, and nobody even reacted. <laughs> Except for me. I was like, uh, should we leave? Nobody even reacted. <laughs> so the fact that they evacuated for porn, when I have straight up seen shoppers not react to the sound that is supposed to alert you to a life-threatening situation, pretty interesting to me. Hurt, hurt, porn alert, porn alert. Someone in the channel came up with the best word. Someone in the channel came up with the best word in the world. Tall guy. The manager was procrastinating. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah. That is the best word in the world! I mean, who hasn't done some procrastinating? Oh time? my god! That is the... Oh, hi. Oh! You still have a mouse on your head, you know. <laughs> You're on the internet, kitty. No, no fucks. You're on the internet fuck. with a mouse on your head. Not a single fuck. <laughs> and oh, okay, bye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, speaking of, I guess we can pleasuring oneself in unfortunate places. Um. This this is another. This keeps happening. Why does this keep happening? People should heed us. We are prophets of a better age, and yet they don't, because we we tell them, we warn them, we show them the dangers, and they do not heed us. Mini driver smashed her mini into the back of a van while pleasuring herself with a sex toy at the wheel. Dan, I am this to me today. <clears throat> woman crashed in the back of the van while using a sex toy when she was stuck in traffic. The mini driver lurched forward to hit the vehicle in front of her after apparently getting distracted at the wheel. The driver of the van, who was delivering fish to restaurants, initially worried he would be sacked. But when his boss looked at the company, MJ Seafood, checked the video footage, they saw the other motorists been using a vibrator. I mean, I know sitting in traffic is boring. When what? I when I've been sitting in traffic, I will do things like, you know, I'll play with my phone a little bit. I'll I'll fuck around the radio. Maybe I'll even roll the window down, look around, you know. But I keep my foot on the brake or I put the car in park. My hands are somewhere near the steering wheel. I'm not digging around under my seats, and I sure as ain't playing with myself. No. <laughs> Who, what? what? Why do you carry your vibrator around anyway? Who, me? Like... Well, I don't. <laughs> why would I? I? I actually used to have a coworker who was a very sheltered girl, and she started reading Fifty Shades of Grey and would come in every day with questions. And I'm like, you should not be reading this book. It's like, it's a little advanced for you. And she came in one day and was like, Tara, he put balls up her ass. <laughs> why do you put balls up your ass? And I'm like... I don't. <laughs> Thank you for assuming that I do. And I kind of just did that to you. So I apologize for assuming that you would carry your vibrator wherever you go. Uh, I'm sure you keep it at home in a very safe place. 
<laughs> who does this? Who like who has a car vibrator? Yeah, I mean, is it yeah, is... one for home, one for the desk, <laughs> one for the car? No, those are glasses or chargers. Right. I, have, I have a charger for my car. I have a charger for my house. Who does this? Did you absolutely positively charger, not charger? Do you absolutely have to have a sex toy at hand at all times? You shouldn't have a sex toy at hand at all times. I feel sorry for this poor guy. He gets his car rear-ended and the first thing he's thinking is, oh God, I'm getting fired. Oh God, I'm getting... What the fuck? Nope, nope, you're cool. You're fine. I love this. Um, the film captured using the band's rear camera shows the woman, said to be in her 30s, hurriedly doing up her trousers in the aftermath of the crash. Uh, I love that that's her first priority. Wouldn't it be yours? Well, okay, I would... You, all right, you're You want to explain that? I would like to say my first priority would be to see if anyone was hurt. But no. you're right. I would... <coughs> I'd be like, oh, you get shit. A car because, because you're spanking it, your first priority is to hide all evidence <laughs> of the fact that you hit a car because you were spanking it. <laughs> Uh, you get on the phone to make it look like you were on the phone. Herky doesn't know in the channel says she was driving her mini, if you know what I mean. That's awful. <laughs> Talkspin. He got rear-ended, but apparently that's what she wanted. <clears throat> this is not okay. <laughs> this this is not a no. multitasking situation. Why would you even want to do that? Like, yeah, you know, that's one of those things I forget when I'm, when I'm singing to myself in the car, I will get into that shit. I will be pulling off some, some like, so now I come to you with a, I will be, be jamming. And I then have, I have belted <clears throat> Lawrence and the machine in my car hard enough to cure a migraine. And then you know what happens? With all the Yeah. Then you pull up next to somebody and you're like, hi, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do nothing. My point is, when you're doing shit in the car, they can see you. Yeah. And you forget that sometimes. You forget that you're not in your own little private pod. You know, like <clears throat> Oh. Well. And think like we're that embarrassed to be singing along with our radio in the car. This chick straight up had a vibrator shoved inside of her. Yes. Oh, okay. Not inside of her. There's all different kinds of vibrators, so I shouldn't assume that. One last but. one. Dorade and Gooba. Jesus take the wheel should not be an orgasm quote. <laughs> Do you know the urban legend <clears throat> about the guy who lost his hand? inside his girlfriend because they got in a car accident and it got severed by her seatbelt. That was like a total urban legend on Long Island when I was a teenager that like he was fingering his girlfriend while he was driving and they got in an accident and his hand got severed and and like inside of her. Like not stuck, like she could take it out, but <laughs> it got severed at the wrist like <laughs> There's, there's things to do in the car and there's things to not do in the car is what I'm saying. Don't diddle and drive. Anyway, while we're speaking of, why would you do that? Oh, apparently it's still going strong back on Long Island. Someone with a name I can't pronounce. This? Big Waluigi something something. Okay, kids, this is going to be the absolute worst story you hear all week. Get Last back. week we had a guy who made himself a <clears throat> shit pocket. Get you, oh, Tara, you're going to lose your fucking mind. I did. I, I, when I read this story, I, and I will say, I went back to the original source, which was in German. I confirmed it. I, this is this happened. Is it worse than the shit Hot Pocket? Get rid, you were going to lose your mind. I lost my mind. I read this story, and I lost my... I was like, what? No. What? Oh, my... Mother... Man drugs girlfriend to keep... Playing video games. What? 
court fined a 23-year-old man in North Rhine-Westphalia in Germany after he admitted to giving his girlfriend a sedative so he could keep playing video games with a friend. I only put four or five drops in her tea, the man told the court. On the evening in August 2014, he was playing on his games console when a friend with his now ex-girlfriend arrived at Imagine. home. <clears throat> After 10 hours of work, she understandably been planning on having a quiet evening rather than one punctuated with a clatter of machine gun fire. The woman slept until midday the following day after drinking the drug tea. Then I got up and drove to work, although I was nodding off again. Her then-boyfriend admitted what he had done the day after the crime. She admitted that her ex, too, had been on drugs at the time, which was why the, the reason for their breakup shortly after. You mother cock bandit ass Christ fucker. And she's like, hey, could you shut <sighs> off the video games? I've had a really long day. I would like to relax. And your response is to fucking roofie her. She should get to beat you severely with your Xbox controller. No, no, no. That, that, take the Kinect, Microsoft Kinect, and put it right up his ass. Mm -hmm. Put that shit, colonoscopy the very hard way. Because you should have to log on to your Xbox account, log into Call of Duty <clears throat> with like the chat speak on and let like a, a puppy hopped up on caffeine have the controller and just suffer the abuse from 14 year olds over the headset. For three days. Jesus. I mean. This was the solution. All right, look, if you were in any circumstance, any circumstance at all, if your solution to a conflict in a relationship is to drug the other person, you should not be in that fucking relationship. Yeah. That's your solution. Your solution is pack your shit and leave. Especially when that's the solution too, but I <clears throat> really want to keep playing Xbox. What are you, 12? can play that shit later. You have other things to do. Like, be be considerate. Like, not be a fucking dickbag. I know you don't get, you know, Xbox achievements for not being an asshole. But it's still valuable. God, maybe you should. <clears throat> Wouldn't that be great? Think about how quickly the world would improve if you got fucking World of Warcraft gold for not being a dick. Oh shit, we need, has there, has someone, anyone in the chat find out, is there like a life achievements app or something? That if you do something that- No, it should be fucking video game achievements because that's the only <clears throat> language motherfuckers like this understand. Uh, like, fine, you got an Xbox achievement. You unlocked a new, I don't even know what cause I don't play video games. <laughs> but that, that might be- It's a new hack where we have to get to that like congratulations you successfully did not cat call that chick walking down the street you get 10 gold in world of warcraft or whatever the kids play these days i, I mean and this was this was not one of those to spur the this is some forethought going on here <clears throat> I mean, if you're if you're in a relationship with another person and you cannot work out your your problems to the point the only way you can solve your issues is to shut the other person off, go. Be free. Fly, if, yes. fly away. That's probably time to, you know, have some conversation. People don't have off buttons, but you know what? The Xbox does. And when you turn it back on, it'll be right where you left it. Yep. There's a thing called save game, I'm told. Uh, mother... F just, it's given every... This is giving humans a bad name. People saying giving gamers a bad... This is humans a bad name. That's just... That's... <clears throat> 
that's a piece of shit right there. Yeah, I, th- I think that's that's the first thing we need to learn tonight. You cannot solve your interpersonal problems through drugging the other party. No. That is almost never the solution unless you're pulling off a really awesome heist. I wouldn't call that a relationship though. True. We were we were talking at this at this event I was at tonight and uh my boss actually said that there should be more female serial killers in the world because then men would be afraid of women and men wouldn't be assholes. Right? It kind of works. So I've decided that I'm going to become a female serial killer. And Dan objected to that until I was like, no, no, you're going to help me get rid of the bodies. I don't know you. Prank caller. Prank caller. So that's going to be my new line of work. I'm just going to murder men and really, I got to work out my MO. Tara, you understand this shit is admissible. Well, I mean, I won't do it here. (laughs) You're trying to give me a stroke, aren't you? They're very upset. They're like, no, that's a bad idea. I'm your first victim and you're trying to give me a stroke. See, that's the thing. It'll look like an accident. (sighs) We've learned that there's a time and a place to enjoy yourself in that way. And all y'all motherfuckers are accessories now. And that time and place is not in the middle of traffic. No. We've learned the fastest way to clear out a target is the sound of blowjobs. Yeah. We've learned theater etiquette is is kind of important. It's, it's, and if you don't know it, you made your mama cry. Your mama is sad to know you. Imagine being the person that went <clears throat> to the theater with him. Oh, geez. Yeah, you are, she's not calling, dude. Yeah, no. Dude, you're, she's not calling. You're you're not getting laid tonight. <laughs> yeah, she, I texted her like five times today. She never got back to me. She, she's not gonna. She's not gonna. We've learned that <clears throat> we we have a seating arrangement that could end up in love in the air or the fucking rage howler monkey death march through the sky. I mean, those two aren't always mutually exclusive. <laughs> Let's be honest. One often leads to the other. No comment. And then finally, we've learned that if you're arrested, I guess that at some certain points, the best thing you can do is just be honest about it. Yeah. I just like pigs. We also learned a new word. Procrastinating. That is the that is the best. I think that should be our title. That would be, oh fuck yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. It would be cro- procrastinating. Up, it's a play. Okay, somebody has asked if they can be my first serial killer victim. Weird. Wait, weird. No, 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 no. That that's that's a Patreon tier. You have to wait for that one.